Hi Toto fam, Karibu, welcome, bienvenue, à quoi va to your channel, so how you doing? So today we coming back with the second review of it, season 4 of Put a Ring on It. So the show picks up where he left off last week, which was um, at the gathering with Dr. Nicole. And then we were talking about the result of Shay's um, date. And then she walked off because she was expressing how she felt. And Fonzo was still laughing about it, which is a partner. So we don't know. I don't know if he was laughing because he was embarrassed or because he was um, upset or just because he didn't care, you know. Because people laugh. They have like that love for different reasons. Okay. So she put herself together where she was. She calmed down. And then she came back and then basically what everything that Dr. Nicole said is pretty much very close to the analysis that I made from my review of the first episode last week you can also watch that I'll put the link in the description box below if you're interested and yeah pretty much he doesn't want his dirty laundry to be aired out there but I'm thinking you're on a show so you must know that this is gonna be this is going to be public right this is gonna be public knowledge this is going to be for everybody to talk about. Like everybody can have an opinion. If you don't want that, then you shouldn't be on the show. You know, simple as. Then we move on to the second couple, which is the athletic couple, Otis and Charlana. So Otis and Charlana, the feedback from where she came back from a date with Meta, the Namibian guy, is that Otis was really extremely obsessed. Uh, upset. Like he was very, he was so mean that he was bordering on rude. You know, it, the comment that she didn't like that she mentioned was that he kept referring to her that she was dirty, not because she came back from a sweaty athletic date, but because of the fact that she just went on a date and that she had a good time and then she accepted flowers from from another guy. So that made her dirty and then she was quite upset about it because it made her feel like it made her feel embarrassed and kind of like she was being put down. And when they asked him, when Dr. Nico asked him about it, he denied it. It was like, no, it wasn't in that sense. It was, it was just in a, in a, in a platonic sense of that. She just came back. She was sweaty. He wanted her to take a shower. But we both got it. That it wasn't because of that. What a liar, right? So he denied it, of course. And then Dr. Nico recognizes the fact that he is overly possessive. You know, if you have a partner that is overly possessive, it's not healthy, but it's also dangerous for you. Because those are the partners that tomorrow they turn into uh, my, my for my man or fatal attraction, you know, those kind of things. So you need to watch out, you know. The last couple, which is the, <laughs> the cute opposite attract couple for me, is Shorty, Mark, and Kenneth. Shorty and Kenneth. So... We already know how he felt last week when she came back from the date. It was not happening at all, you know. And he started to act the way he usually act. Like a kid throwing tantrums, throwing his toys out of the pram. He was very upset. They had an argument about it. And um, now they asked Shorty how she felt about her date with Hollywood. And then she responded like she actually enjoyed it. Like she was pleasantly surprised. And they had a good date. And she explained the incident that he had to throw away the... The, the, the necklace that he gave her and but we learned more like he also had the audacity to take her phone lock himself with her phone in another room and it took two hours to inspect her phone like to go through her phone her messages with her friends i'm like who does that only to give it to her two hours to give it to her two hours later and I'm like, this guy, he has serious, serious insecurities, trust, childish issues. And I thought that was the top of the, top of the, like the top of the icing for me. Like that was the worst of the worst for me. But I find out something else later. Let's carry on. So when he was confronted the body by Dr. Nicole, he said, well, he didn't, he didn't really say much. He didn't really acknowledge anything. He didn't really deny anything. He was just sitting at her like... And the way he was looking at her, like, up and down, like... You can clearly see he was mad. He was clearly upset about the whole thing. It's almost like he doesn't want to be here anymore. He doesn't want to do this because... I think he's starting to feel already that he's losing her. That he's definitely going to lose her to someone else. Because 
especially if he carries on this behavior it's just not going to work so this is the thought that dr nicole gave him she told him to to recognize to recognize his fault that's what she told him to do if i'm not mistaken and the lesson that she gave for the week is those these couples they need mutual understanding so they need to each other each part of them they need to hear their feelings and they need to recognize it so they can have mutual understanding and move forward so we are all aware that this week is is time for the guys to date right but before we get on to the date they showed an argument another argument that kenneth and shorty were having in a car and that argument carried on all the way home till where they were about to go to bed so i don't know if it's the editing but it seems like it carried on for a long time because when they left that place with dr nicole it was daytime they were driving i don't know how far they leave from the place they drove all the way with this argument they got home with this argument they went to bed with this argument and what was the argument about well when she got a phone back she realized other things that he was doing on her phone apparently he take a screen he took a screenshot of her financial details and he sent it to himself i mean i was just like what who does that if that was me personally i would be over with this relationship like right now like you don't do this to me. like you don't play with my money I would be out of there right now like and then the next day at the minute i will call my bank cancel everything and the next day i'll be out there to the bank to make sure everything is canceled all the new cards new credit cards new pins change my passwords like i'll be doing everything 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 because this is over for me like it violates a privacy and it doesn't seem like it's the first time because when she asked him he was like yeah i was just being stupid again I'm like, so you know that what you're doing is stupid, but you still do it anyway. Oh, it's stupid, though. I can't believe this guy. He's such a kid. Like, he's such a boy. The way he acts, the way he talks. Woo! Kenneth, it's just not a good look. It's just, and she's way too mature, way too classy for him, right? So anyway, let's move on. And we also found out that apparently he's that petty. He did it before with uh, when they had a fight. He did it before at her job so it would it will flood her instagram with spams and stuff like that because she's a radio personality and that will somehow affect her job too and i'm like who does that he has this mindset that if i can't have her nobody else can i'm telling you i'm telling you shorty this is some fatal attraction mindset like fatal attraction vibe if you don't watch the show please find it it's all over youtube fatal attraction i'm sure it's on tv there in america they show it regularly like you don't want to end up like one of those women like this guy is cr is cray cray he's just crazy the way he acts to me it's unbelievable that she's even still there putting up with it i've gone a long time ago like who does that and then he has the got to apologize like i'm sorry but there is no but this is just like an acceptable behavior the minute that she said i want you to delete this out of your phone you should have done it pronto but he didn't even do it straight away. He's trying to distract her from it. And I'm like, girl, I hope he's really deleted it and he doesn't have any backup. Even if he has it, me, I don't care. I will go to the bank and I'll make sure that everything is changed. Because, no, once you show me this kind of behavior, he's definitely over jealous. Like, he's definitely got, she said it herself. He's the type of guy, if nobody can have me, no one else can. Like, what? And then you happy with that? I'll be out of there in the shop. I'll be gone, like gone in a minute. Anyway, so we move on to the dates with the guys, right? Oh, no. Before the dates with the guys, they ask the girls if they want to go on the second date with the with the dates that they've just been on. So Chalana said no because she had no connection with the Namibian dude, Meta. She said no because there was no physical attraction. I said that last time because when you look at Shay and you look at Fonzo, they look really good together and it looks like they have a certain type of people that they're like she does. It looks like to me she likes big guys, flamboyant guys, funny guy. You know, someone who can like stand next to her because she's a curvy, she's a curvy lady, right? So she said no. 
there was no physical attraction for her so she's not gonna see brian again and shorty i had a feeling shorty was gonna say yes because shorty enjoyed herself last time and then kenneth is getting on the damn nerves so she said yes she definitely wants to see hollywood again because they had a good time and it was hella funny so kenneth was mad like <laughs> the fact that she was even thinking about it, he was already mad. And the fact that she said yes, he was looking her up like this. Like, really, bitch, she said yes. But, yeah, she want to see him again. That's the whole point of the process. So, you better get used to it. So, now the guys are going on a date. And then we found out who are the dates and how they went. And some of them, we found out their reaction at, like, Dr. Nicole. And some will carry on next week. So, Otis athletic couple <clears throat> is that was shiri so they went on like they call it a cake and sip so they went together to make a cake i guess when i saw shira i was like oh cute girl the first thing i saw i said when i saw her was um dress smart dress classy it seemed to me like a like a classy chick because the way she dressed it was like she was going at the office like for an appointment but at the same time, she looked cute. Like, she didn't show any flesh at all. She was sexy but classy. Like, you could see a curve through her clothes, but she wasn't showing any skin. No trashy at all. I love that about her. And then, he, he first appreciated the way she was dressed, but after he made a comment like, you know, he would have loved to see more skin, which showed to me that this guy is very shallow. Like, he's very shallow. One, he seems to be very shallow. And two, it doesn't seem to be able to hold an intelligent conversation with an intelligent woman. It's one of those guys where me, I call them empty barrels. Like they've got nothing up here, everything down here. So they just think looks is everything and then they ride with it. Because she didn't show any skin, that doesn't make her not attractive. It doesn't make her any less sexier than what she is. But he contradicted himself afterwards and he did admit that she was, you know, she looked good and and he found it somewhat attractive so they did have some vibes you know but they were both like they did have some vibes the date was okay it wasn't all that so the reaction is when he came back to charla and his girlfriend she was like i felt like she was more okay with it at the beginning and then she became very petty when she mentioned the flowers on the cake insisting being shady about what happened to her flowers last week and then they got on the subject with boundaries because at the beginning they did establish boundaries and there was like no kissing no touching like everything that has to do about respecting the other partner they should stick to it but then Otis mentioned like he wants to remove the boundaries and he's saying it's for her own benefit because he knows that he can stick to it she was like hell no hell to the no 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 these boundaries are not coming up they're gonna stay on and i'm like is it for real like really i felt like he want. yeah i definitely feel like he wants to remove the boundaries so he can go out there and enjoy himself and flirt and do everything and key 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 i would have said i would have said yes i would have been like you know what if the boundaries are the thing that are going to make you act right then it means you don't love me enough to act right so let me just remove the boundaries and see how you act Yes, yeah, so I would have let him remove it and then let him go. And then see what... Because, see, that would have been the real test. That would be the the, 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 the truthful test, whether he really loved Charlana or not. No boundaries. You do what you want and then see what happens. Because with boundaries, you'd be like, yeah, I'm not doing this because of the boundaries. But even though, you know, men are men, I'm pretty sure he would still do it regardless of the boundary. Because when he came back and she asked him anyway what happened, he was like, yeah, he gave her a small hug and... And I'm like, what, nigga? You said no hugs. And you gave her... Like, Chalana came back last week. There was no contact. And she only got flowers. And the guy was high rate. And he gave, like, a small hug. I said, uh-uh. Double standard. Hypocrite. Autistic hypocrite. Okay? So, we move on to Fonzo. So, we found that Fonzo date. Her name is Chantel. She cute. But for me, I wrote not his type because the way I see Shay and I see Chantel is like completely opposite looks wise. And I feel like they're opposite personality wise too. Chantel was very like forward, aggressive, 
like the type of woman who goes for what she wants so the day they went for lunch it was a nice lunch in a little cute establishment and the date was very flirtatious because Chantel was very forthcoming even the way she was dressed you know the cleavage was out and <laughs> side note when they were leaving the house she was super petty she was doing way way too much you see when you do too much like this it just means that you're insecure because if you're secure within yourself you do like charlana you see charlana she wasn't tripping she tucked it in she said hello she said goodbye see you later that's how you do it you don't let your competition see you sweat that's just wrong don't let them see you sweat girl you need to keep it together but she lost it she gave shit the minute that girl came from the door. One, she, she didn't want to let her in. Two, she gave a shade. Trying to tell her what to do. Try to cover cover your cleavage. Like, this doesn't button up. You try. You should try to cover. I'm like, who are you to tell this grown woman what to do? And she's a mother of two. You can't tell her what to do now. And you ain't got no kids. Like, really? I was just like, oh, shit. That's a slippery slope. Don't do that, honey. Do not do it. Of course, Chantel didn't do it because, you know, she gone. She does what she wants. And then she still like gravity them. She follows them all. She doesn't want to let them get out the house. And then when she does, she follows them all the way to the car. And then when they're about to pull up, ta -ta -ta -ta, she taps on the window. And then she tells Chantel not to put her arms on the armrest in the car. And I'm like, what? This is another crazy thing. Who does that? And finally, Chantel said, why are you not about to tell me what to do? Because I'm grown. I feel like if that conversation carried on, they would have gotten into an argument, possibly a fight. I'm, all, I, I, I'm happy that he stopped right there and then they left. But that just left a really bad taste in my mouth when it came to her and her relationship. Like she has very deep, deep, deep insecurities. And then um, that's not a good way to be in a relationship at all. So they left for that brunch. Extremely flirtatious vibes during the brunch. Like he was happy that he see got it. Chantel touched his beard. They talk about kids. We found out that he actually has three kids, not one. Because last week they revealed one. This week three. How many baby mamas has he got? I don't know. Can someone tell me in the comment how many baby mamas has he got? Because he's got three kids. She got two. And he's got a 20 year old, which tell me he started having them pretty young, right? And then she asked him if he wants more kids. At, at the beginning, he said no, he doesn't really want any more, but he's open to reconsidering with the right person. I think he mentioned Shay because Shay wants kids, she doesn't have any kids. So I think for her, he would want to have kids. So that's a good one because I think if you are with someone that doesn't have children, unless they don't want children, they made that very clear. And then you, you have children already. It's bound to happen that you're going to have to have more children with that person. That's just a normal process. At least one, if not two or three. You know. So they talked about that. And then they really seem to like each other. But I found that to be too forward, too aggressive. You know. I like a man to do his thing. To hunt. To fight for me. To show me that he wants me. I don't want to be like. Make it so obvious already that I like you. I want to be with you. You know, no, 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 no. I'm going to sit here with my poker face on, you know, and let you do the work for the first date. You know, I can't be doing all this that Chantel did. It's too much for me. Okay. So last date is Kenneth. Man boy. So man boy Kenneth, he went on a craft. It's like a craft class. That was his date. And his date was called Shamaya. She's a cute date. Petite girl. I think his type, he likes petite girls. So, cute little date. You know, a little bit taller than Shorty. But, same body type. Shorty was cool. You know, she didn't give her any aggravation. Very mature about the whole thing. Kenneth was sitting there soaking like a kid. Like, he didn't want to go to the date. And the way he dressed was like, mm, where is he going? She dressed very athletic, sporty. And he's just like, casual, smart. So I was really confused where they were going. I wanted to see. And then I'm like, okay, craft class. Well, I guess it works both ways if it's craft class. So, you know, it's not too bad. But by the way she was dressed, I thought they were going to do something sporty. And then when I saw him, like, no, it's nothing sporty. So anyway, I think the girl, she handled it very well. She was very kind, very open, nice. She was the one leading the conversation. You can tell he wasn't interested. He said it. He apologized for it. Like, his mind was on shorty. 
like he was still upset about the argument they had before so he really didn't want to go on a date but production was like yeah you're going nigga because he signed up for this date so you go so <laughs> anyway you had to go <laughs> so if he was really uncomfortable you know but she was she was chill she was chilling and uh, do i think he's going to see her again no i don't think so until he opens himself up to the process i don't think he's gonna be enjoying himself on those dates and seeing other possibilities so he really needs to put that in his head like he signed up for the process this is the process so he just need to go along and enjoy it without being too disrespectful you know so it was very close which i think was not fair on her and if you if you, you know you know you're gonna have to go anyway so just try to make the best out of it right so for the feedback i think this is the last scene they go back to dr nicole to see what's 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 happened we don't get the feedback for all this week because it kind of like always cuts after one feedback and then we have to catch the the rest next week so we start with fonzo and shay so fonzo was like he had a good date but of course he was giving flirty vibes for me like cheating vibes and you know she had to bring up her insecurities again so from what she was saying it seems to me she's putting up with a lot just to be with him he, he doesn't seem to be very faithful to her because she mentioned he was talking to some people on social media some women and then he's crossing her boundaries all the time so shay if you're not happy in this relationship and he has crossed your boundary more than once that's too many times you need to leave girl you don't need to be with this man especially you don't have any children together i don't know if you have a mortgage together but you don't have kids together so it's easier for you to leave you know the longer you stay in, the, in a bad relationship the harder it is to leave and this guy he doesn't seem like he really wants to be with her like that like that serious you know he, he's already had a full life like he has three kids he has baby mama or baby mamas i don't know how many he's got He's not even serious about introducing her to his family. I said, what is it that we're doing? You know? Oh, God. I just don't. This man. What is, what is, he, what is she putting her through? I don't know. So, prediction. Let's do the prediction for next week for those dates. So, I'm sure when they're going to ask Fonzo if he will want to go for a second date with Chantel. And my prediction is he's going to say yes. Because he really enjoyed himself. They had good vibes, something going on between the two. And I'm sure he wants to take this further. So I think he's going to say yes. For Otis and his date, I think he will also say yes. For some reason, I feel like he's going to feel like, yeah, I want to see more from this girl. Because she's smart, she's intelligent, she's classy. So he will want to see his sexy, her sexy party side. So I think he's going to say yes. Plus, he wants to see some more flesh from her. Maybe next time she's going to come and then show more cleavage or legs. I don't know. It's up to her. But I have a feeling he's going to say yes. That he will want to see Miss Sheree again. And Kenneth. So, Kenneth, I think, uh, he's definitely going to say no to the date. If he's still in that sulky mode. But if he has time to think about it, he will say yes. Just to give her a second chance to redeem himself. So that he can have a better experience with that girl next time. So that's it for episode 2. We see how it goes. How did you find this episode? For me, things haven't kicked off yet. So I found it like the first episode standard of what we watch on the show. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Don't forget to watch uh, the review of the first episode. It's also below. I put the link. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe. And thank you for rocking me from the beginning. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that bell so you know what's up next time. Alright fam, I'll see you next week. Okay, bye. <laughs>